Hello friends, welcome to your own YouTube channel Achievers and Data Engineering. My name is Gyanendra and in this video we are going to talk about how to create month over month analysis chart in Power BI like this, right? So how can we have this kind of visualization created in Power BI where we can you know show the variance difference between months regardless of sales or any other measure that we want to show a variance difference, right? So I have already created one example for you. So here this chart is showing a month over month sales analysis. This light blue bar is showing the sales of current month and this dark blue bar is showing the sales of present month. And this orange line is showing the variance percentage difference between months, right? So I can switch between years. For example, now I have selected 2013 and uh, this is showing the diff percentage variance between you know these months and uh, so if, if you notice like in january 2013 total sales were 2.1 million and if you talk about in feb this previous month sale is appearing 2.1 million so this 2.1 million is same as 2.1 1 million which is showing as a previous month's sale right and that's how we are calculating the percentage difference and uh, this is used to you know analyze where we are going in terms of sales and how the business is going on right so this is very important chart now how to create that let's get started all right so we are in the blank power bay report now let me first introduce you to the data that i have got uh, this table is nothing but the sales details table from AdventureWorks database and I have got sales order ID, sales order detail ID, product ID, unit price, sales amount and order date. Very important metrics that we need in order to create this chart is sales amount and order date. Based on these two, we can go ahead and create that visualization. So at this point of time, we don't do not need to add any additional columns or we do not need to make any you know, transformation. So we'll go to the visualization pane. Now we just need to you know create a couple of measures, right? So let me define the steps. How can we do that? Step number one would be sales this month. All right. Number two would be sales last month. Number three, we need sales variance. All right. And step four would be calculating this variance percentage. Now, once we have got this, finally, we can go ahead and select the chart and we can, you know, create that visualization. All right. Now, before I go ahead and start a measure, I would again suggest one thing. So if you are selecting an, like if you are working on a model and where you are, you know, using multiple tables, then make sure you are keeping all of your measures in a separate table. Otherwise it would be really tough when it comes to finding the measure. So for example, you have got more than 30, 40 measures created, then you will really, you know, look around and type to find the measures. Now, usually I do, I create a separate table and keep all of my measures in that single table. So I'll go ahead and select that table, go to new measures and select new measure, which is nothing but total sales. All right, so I'll use calculate function, calculate sales amount. Oops, sorry. First we need to define the sum, then sales amount. All right, no filters required as of now. Now, another measure that we need is sales last month. All right, so for that again, I'll use calculate total sales. We need to calculate the total sales. Now, over here, once we are calculating the sales of previous month, either we can, you know, do it using date add function. However, right now I'm going to, you know, use the parallel period function. So over here, first I need to define the date. So I can define the order date. Okay. Now one important thing over here, if you have, if you are using the you know original date column that you have got in your table from database, then make sure that you are selecting this dot date property. All right. 
just to make sure you are referring to the actual date however if you have created a specific date table and you have defined that in model that okay it, it's a date table then you will not have to select this dot date property and you can leave it only selecting the date column okay now when it comes to the number of intervals i will define the minus one because we are talking about the sales of previous month and intervals i'll select the month and close the bracket all right so now we have got two measures maybe i can go ahead and delete this test column that i created just for having that table created now you can see here this measure table that i created its icon is changed now from an ordinary table to a measures table and i'll keep all of my measures in this table specific let me go ahead and create a table over here i'll you know show you the measures that we have created as, as of now let me take the order date i'll remove the hierarchy of days and quarter take the total sales all right we have got the total sales sales of last month okay so here you can see that uh, sales of 2012 2011 may is appearing in 2011 june right so this is how it is representing the sales of previous month okay now we need sales difference so i'll create sales variance let me like an underscore all right so it will be super simple we can go ahead and deduct from total sales minus sales last month all right super easy so you can see we are we have got the variance of sales now another important measure that we need is variance percentage so i'll name it as sales variance percentage okay to have this percentage created i'll use a divide function and i'll divide sales uh, sales variance from sales last month all right now it's a value as of now so i'll go ahead and select the percentage and two decimals are fine as of now so now you can i mean at this point of time we have got all the measures that we needed to create that visualization and now we can go ahead and select this line and clustered column chart maybe maybe delete this table just to give some more space okay i'll go ahead and select the order date and remove the additional hierarchy i'll keep it at only month level and i'll select the total sales all right now before i add additional columns let me go ahead and create two slicers so i'll again select the order date from hierarchy i'll let me create a duplicate of this as well i'll go ahead and drop quarter day and month so that i can have only years make it as drop down all right and in this one i'll drop day quarter and year just to have months make it as drop down okay i'll give them some nice look go to general effects visual borders and shadows similarly for our chart go to general effects visual border and shadows let me expand a bit all right let me select 2012 now you can see here it is showing the sales of 2012 in slicer i'll go ahead and give the select all option so by default all months are selected when we select any year but it doesn't show just for the you know make sure that it is visible i have selected the select all option now i'll go ahead and select sales last month as well and let me turn on the data labels all right so now again you can see here uh, for example in april the total sales were 1.6 million and in next month in may it is appearing as sales of previous month so now i can go ahead and go into the build visual again and have this variance percentage 
dragged in line value all right so now you can see this axis has been converted into a percentage so this line is showing us the percentage difference a percentage movement between first months to another and this is how we can go ahead and calculate a percentage variance or a percentage or sales variance analysis between months over month so again make sure whenever you are giving or whenever you are preparing this visualization give an option to select a single year instead of a multiple years just to have a correct results all right so i hope you have got a better idea and some you know good understanding how to create a sales analysis or month over month analysis variance chart in power bi so if you have liked the content please do hit the like and subscribe to my channel and if you have any questions please do let me know in the comments i would love to answer that thank you for watching and keep learning have a great day